Hi, good afternoon. Hello. Oh, it's nice to see your craft rooms behind you. That's interesting. Can I have a little nosy mouse? <laughs> you can hear me, can't you? Yes. Yeah, we're coming through. Yes, everybody's nodding, Andrew. Yeah. So Andrew's just going to mute anybody. If you want me to stop, redo anything at any point, just put a little comment in or wave at me and uh, I'll slow down or go back over it again. Okay. So have you all had a go with your frames? No, we're all saying no. Right. Okay. So as you've seen on some of the projects that we've done, we came up with this idea through a lot of it was through the gathering of gatherings that we were doing. Sorry. Right. Okay. Uh, Andrew's just, just, just pointing me in, in directions. So I apologize. Just bear with me a second. I've just got to get organized. Now, one of the things that we did, it, it came from the gathering of gatherings and we'd got this particular die that we'd not really seen lots of which was this particular wooden frame, which is this one. So this is nature's frame. And this is on our website. Now, um, I think this was a web exclusive originally. So I don't think this actually, this one's actually been on air, let's say. So what happened was we then did the gathering of gatherings. Okay. Which was all these little tiny dies and we had lots of them and they were fabulous. But I, came up with a, an idea that we need uh, it would be nice to frame them and then just by fluke I found these and I thought oh this would be interesting to actually use them as a frame so they actually married up quite well but as I was doing them Stephanie said well I like those we need to be able to give them to you guys to, for you to be able to use and can we come up with an easier way instead of um, doing them by hand and measuring and scoring and snipping and doing all that kind of thing that you can buy. We've, so we've come up with this. So that's why we've ended up with these three sizes of these fabulous frames. And they really are because for that quick project, these are going to be amazing because they're already cut, they're already scored. So all the work's done for us. Now we've done them as big as we possibly could get them to be. So if this was a die, these would be a fortune to actually buy because they'd be solid pieces. There wouldn't be anything missing and we wouldn't be able to mat and layer them because of the score lines. And then how do we get that through a machine? Not everybody has got an A4 platform. So these are actually 28 centimeters long or 11 inches. So we did them as long as, as big as we could possibly get them to be for you. And then the sizes, we did a one inch, three quarters and, and half an inch. But then that gives us lots of scope to do lots of different things with them. So basics, just pure basics. So this is one of the ones that is, um, I'm going to measure that. Yep, three quarters inch. You know, when you, you doubt yourself, and I thought that's half an inch. That, I just doubted myself for a second there. So this is quite a deep one. So this is the three quarters inch. And then this is the half inch. But again, you can see the difference in perspective that we can get. On this one, I've really been able to fill it up. And then going on to the actual inch um, square, which I've got one here. So these are super, super chunky then, aren't they? Um, to be able to use these. So look at, look at that. That is a really chunky one. But then we can move on from this. We don't have to have them like this. We can have them. So there's loads. This is where I start getting, I have to excuse me if I start getting a little bit carried away because I just love these. Frames and things like this are amazing. I, I just love working with them because of the potential. So then we've created this one. Now that's not sealed in just yet. So first of all, just creating that basic frame, nothing else. It's just a basic frame. Now you can put everything in here, but this isn't just um, for your cards and things. This is home decor now, isn't it? This is, we're going into a whole different realm altogether. Then that can sit on top, okay, or inside. So we've got different depths, but then we can take it a little bit further because not quite the same size. 
So I've kept the aperture the same and I've done, so that's an inch one and then this is half an inch. But I've kept the inside aperture the same and now they mat on top of one another. So that creates an entirely different frame, okay? So that's one way of using it. But then you can obviously go the other way. So you could actually build up a really, really deep frame. So you can imagine you've got one that's the inch, then you do another one, exactly the same size, cut it exactly the same size, mat that on top. So that's three quarters of an inch. And then you can mat the half an inch on top. So you've gone that, got then got a beautiful three step frame, which is gonna be quite substantial. So to put in all of your decoupage pieces, really build up that frame and that image uh, like a shadow box, but this is your shadow box, how you want it to look, the size that you need for your particular project, which again, you can't do that normally. Um, it, it's, it's, it takes a lot of effort, doesn't it? But we've made it this swift way, this quick way, by actually giving you the sizes, and they're so easy to work with. So then, going on from that, you don't have to have squares, you just cut different sizes and we've got rectangles. So not only have we got the squares, we've also got our rectangles. And again, it's entirely up to you what size you do. So this one, I don't believe I cut anything off this one. Yes, I did a little bit. But you can imagine how big a frame. So you can actually go do something really quite random and have a, a rectangle inside, or you could have a square and then a smaller square or three small squares inside there and really go to town with how you put these together. So it's just practice of making the frames. So with that in mind, you should see the, I've got them stacked up here like this, like I've got Mount Everest of frames all over the place, all in part, part pieces. I've got bits of, see, I've got bits of frames everywhere. Look, I've got them all over the place. They're all just bits. So then one of the exciting things that I also love, so I go back to this first. This is one of the frames. Now, I do know now on the website, this is like one color, but I do know there's either three or four colorways of this now. And one of the things that I did with, that with this, when I did this one, it's actually got four struts. So it's got, um, it's got the frame, and to make it bigger, I snipped here and here and just extended it. So I made it a little bit bigger, but I kept the pieces that have got the, they've got like, um, net, that's it, thank you, Andrew. It's got nail marks in it. It's actually got nails in the wood. So the piece that I've kept is the bit with the nails. The bit that I've tucked in is the bit without. So it looks like this is built up again on top of it. So. These are now in different colorways. Now I'm going to tell you a secret, but you're not. Ah, look, Lou's got them. <laughs> oh, oh, bless her. So these are in different colorways now, but there are more coming. We've got more nested frames coming in different ways. So we've got like tweaks and things, but I didn't tell you. Okay, that's the secret. So we've got more, more. <laughs> Kay's laughing. It is, it's a secret K. Don't, shh, can't tell anybody. So we've got more frames coming that will actually work really well with these and they are brilliant. They're just beautiful. So keep that in mind. So going back to the ones that we've got. Now to make the frames, it is so, so easy. But, you know, like I've just said about having those print-offs, it's so easy also to put these through an embossing folder. The score lines are going to stay there, okay? So you're still going to be able to find your score lines and actually fold them. But all I did was put that through um, a little wood, faux wood embossing folder, and then I've inked it afterwards. So again, adding texture to these is really, really easy. Even um, your floral ones as well, everything will work with them just by adding that little bit of um, color as well, inking it, um, or even using a plain card stock that's got a white core so I could have put that through because um, you can cut around and snip into them as well and then ink them back. Yeah, so you can, you can do lots of techniques with these, lots and lots of different things, which is a lot of fun. 
So the basics of actually working with them. Well, that's not worked out very well. I've got two different pieces. Start from the beginning. But I'm going to work on the big ones, okay? So it's much, much easier for you to be able to see as well. So we start off on a frame. We've got four sides. Of course we have. Now, the only one absolute rule that you need to stick to is that you need all of these sloping pieces, all the pieces that you've got snipped, snipped out, have all got to go either to the right or if you work like working the other way, they've all got to face that way, okay? If you start by doing this, you're gonna end up with a wrong frame. So that's the only rule that you've got with them is that you have to have either all the straight edges together or all these together, whichever way you want to think about it. But you have to have them all facing the same way before you start. Now with this one, I've gone ahead I've done my folds and it's so easy to fold them. Again, that's one of the absolute joys of the being scored already and pre-done. So I like using red liner tape just for speed, but I would use red liner tape anyway. Because, um, and also maybe a little bit of wet glue because you want that security, especially if you're going to turn it into something that's home decor and you're putting it on your wall. You want that stability. You don't want that frame unraveling part way through the you know the year when you've got that piece up on the wall so I would definitely recommend red liner tape and maybe even also wet glue okay now so we've scored all of them and then I like to whichever way you like to fold them I like to turn them over so this piece is to my left I like working with this piece to my left we're going to add some red liner tape on here like so and I have got some scissors There they are. Excuse me. Like that. So we add red liner tape, and I'm not putting it right up to the edge of this score line here. I'm keeping it that little tiny bit of a distance back. Glasses on. Okay. Now there's two ways of doing this. We can either fold them up and actually create the box like we have here like we're going to do then chop it down or we can already know the size of the frame because sometimes also you might have a project that you're building and you think ah I've not got a frame that size so that again these come into their own don't they because now you can make the size of frame that you want for your project so you might get really carried away with your project and think, no, that's not going to sit, fit my A5 frame that I've got now. But now you've got the ability of making your own frame your, your way. Now, again, so as you can see, I'm working methodically. I'm just doing the same, repeating the same process, but always working the same side. So now it's really, really easy. All you do, like I say, we can actually, in fact, let's make a rectangle because I think you might have seen the frames a few times. So I'm going to cut off a couple of inches, maybe even a bit more, but I'm going to cut from the straight side, okay? I don't cut from this edge, I'm going to cut this side. So I want to chop off this piece. Lou said she's never, Lou, have you never opened them, Lou? Andrew's telling tales on you. <laughs> so I'm cutting five inches off of that, but don't throw that away. Okay. I'll do that again. So now that's my four sides of frame, but I'm still going to rotate them round. I'm working with that cut, cut edge to my left or to your right, whichever way suits you, but you'll figure that out when you start working with them. So now, what I'm going to do, leave it facing the same way. I'm not moving it. I'm going to flip it over 
and fold that top piece down because that's where my tape is. And then I'm going to fold it in half, okay? And I'm just going to bring that edge to that edge and press it down, yeah? Now when I open that up, that's my, my quarter of my frame, okay? So every time you just do exactly the same thing. So I'll do that again. Are you all right? Are you with me, Lou? So we're going to take the tape off. Okay. I'm going to flip it over, fold back that piece so I can see my tape. Fold the whole frame in half and just press that edge to that edge. And that's my frame but I've, I've kept it the same way, okay? So when we've done all four, we should have all four pieces the same, facing the same, same place, yeah? So I'm gonna pop them up there. So I can speed it up again now. So I literally, I've taken my tape off, flip it over, fold that top piece down, fold it in half so they meet and join. So that's my fourth, third one and then do exactly the same thing again. Okay, so we're gonna fold that over, fold it in half, meets at that join, and that makes our actual four pieces of our frame. So now when we lay this out, we've got two long bits and two short bits, but we've got them all facing the same way. We've got the same angle on all of them, okay? So now this is where it becomes really, really easy. So we want short size. So I'm going to make another rectangle. So I'm going to take that one and that one fits in there. So we always have a straight edge to an angle. That's going to slide in there. Okay. This one, we're going to turn all the way around because we always have a straight edge to an angle. But also when you do this, because I've done it, I've made this mistake. I've got all carried away and thought, oh yeah, these are really quick and easy. Put that in there, gone like that. And the bit I need is underneath. And it's like, you. So Kay's laughing at me again. It's like, these can't be any easier and then I do it wrong. It's like, what you like? So always make sure you've got this piece is facing the right way, okay? The angle at the top couldn't be any easier and then I do it wrong. So then that goes in there like that. Okay, and then this one, again, make sure your angle's at the top. Put your flat side in there, flat side in there, and then that is your frame. But that's the frame that suits your project, okay? We will glue it all together, but it can't be any easier. But do you see why you have to make sure that they're all facing the right way? Because if you don't, I've got one facing the other way. No, because I've made all these, so I've done them all that way you end up with one upside down like that, okay? So you end up with two straight bits and two corners that look like that. So you have to work with them all the same way. But that is, that's the only rule that there is. There are no other rules other than that, that you've got to keep them facing the same way. So now we can emboss them. We can do all sorts of things with them. But we can also... Let me just get my piece of paper. And this is one of my favourite things to do with the frames. Are you still all with me? Yeah. So I'm going to move that. I will put that together in a second. So we're now we're moving on again. So here we, here's one I made earlier. <laughs> that I did do the right way and not upside down. So... Here's a different one. Now, there's different ways of doing it. So you can either do them one edge at a time, one side at a time, or you can do them in pairs and then glue the, the, then glue the pairs together. It's entirely up to you how you work. So what I'm now going to do is, oh, start on a wire. I'm going to measure, because I can't remember how big this one, that's, so that's, 15 centimeters. So I'm going to create a card front for this. So when the frame is complete, there'll be a card front on the top of it. So you'll open it up and it'll be a picture and a frame inside. Yeah. So now what we've got to do is 
we need to take the measurement that is the front of this piece and then add on the depth of whatever this is. And if you want it, um, again, you can add another one on. So what you would have is that you'd have your card front that opens. Okay, let me put that together. You have your card front that opens, but if you don't just want that piece, you'd add, add on another half an inch. So you would have a total wrap on that edge and then it would come over the front as well. So let's do that. So we have got 15.2. So if I measure 15 and a half, and these are quarter of an inch. Oh, I've got inches on here. So in inches, my frame in inches, the inches. Why do the inches always run the other way? Six. So I've got a six inch frame. So what I'm going to do is I need six and a, uh, six and a quarter or just over six and a quarter because I want to add on that little bit to eliminate that score line because when you push into your paper and score it, it takes up some of the distance. So you need still need to be able to bend it over pretty much like you do with a book. You need that extra on that curve. So it's six and... Let's take it to seven inches and mark it. Inches there. And cut that. So cut that off. Cut that one. And then again, this side we do need it six inches. Make sure I'm not cutting all the ones I want off. like so. So I'm going to bring my frame in and glue this together and then it'll make it make a lot more sense. So when we're gluing them together, I pop glue on all the side, all of them. This top one, I'm just going to smooth it out. And the book binding glue, the Pinfair book, book binding glue for this is brilliant. Okay. Then I go to the other side and again, put it on all edge, all sides, all the way around like so and then just for an added little bit of security I just put a little bit of dot on that corner and a little dot on that corner which is the top edge then I'm going to fold that in there fold that in there press them into place so just going to hold them for a second just so that glue starts to grab now there's different ways that I've I've used working with these. I've used the frame on my mat to make sure I've got a nice, secure, sharp right angle. So I can turn that round again and I can see that my frame is now nice and square. Or if you've got an acrylic block for your stamping, if you pop that inside and put it up to it until it's set and just hold it in place, that's another way of getting, making sure you've got them aligned really well. So now here's our wrap. Okay, so I can see that that is going to come to that edge and then I'm going to do a line down there and then just fold on that line and then I'm going to do the same at this side but I'm going to go from the other side and that way like so. Make sure I've got all my edges straight. And I'm just using my frame to help me with that. And that fold over. Like so now that's my wrap around. So now I've got my frame. And I slide my frame into there. So then I can build my project, decorate the front, and then I can open it up and it's a frame inside. So obviously I put I would put a back on that. So let's do that. So I'm going to stick this in place first. So now, um, you know the Quirky Bird um, collections and the tunnels and things, the metal tins. So you can use that 
same principle with one of these. So you can build up that tunnel with all your backgrounds. Create a tunnel book, which I, this, this is one of the ways I did actually use the Quirky Birds and did that with this. So that is on there like so. I need another piece of card. Oops. Getting more and more like Stephanie every day. I've got this much space to work in and you should see it's like chaos on here. So I'm actually going to cut this just shy of six inches. Like so. Then I'm going to put the glue on my frame, not on this, because if I was to get carried away, putting my glue on and I get too far on here, once I turn that over, especially if you're using a seam, like we did here, we used a piece of backing paper, I put the glue on the frame and put the frame to the backing paper rather than the other way around. That way I know I'm gonna, not going to get all glue all on the inside of my frame, uh, on my image. So I'm now going to go swirly whirly, technical, technical term that, you know. Don't you find us as crafters, we've got all these fabulous technical terms and we all know what they all mean. Universal language, is it? Isn't it? Pass me the thing in my bubbly, what's it? And we all know exactly what we're talking about. So now that is going to go onto the frame. Like so. Because I know my frame is square, because I've measured it and I've made it. And I know, because obviously, because it's, it's all been precision done for us with all the score lines. So I know it's exactly how I need it to be. So now I can turn that over. And that's a back in on there. And I've turned my frame into a card. But then that's the same principle, whether you're using the half inch, the three quarters of an inch or the inch, or you've even made multiples and stack them on top of one another. So we're going to go back to this one. And remember, we need to have them all the right way, Amanda. Note to self like that okay so now i'm going to put this together and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to do exactly the same frame but i'm going to do the half inch one and i'm going to do another one on top okay so you can see what i mean by matting them on top of one another because i can see lovely lou is looking a little bit what do you mean by matting on top of one another so we're going to do, we'll do it lou okay so like this and glue these together now, I glue them all. I've got plenty of glue on there. I know I've got plenty of time with um, the pin flare glue. I know it's not going to dry out on me. So, and all those edges, and it's literally. And another tip, if you think, oh, I can't get it, if you just flatten this out a little bit, mat it up to the edge, and just slide that in so it meets okay just going to let that take a second so i'm using my mat i know it's going to be fit i know it's going to fit correctly because i know it's been cut right again i'm just going to squash it pop that in there just make sure i've matted and got the right angle excuse my head if it's in shot Hey, Andrew. So I'm now going to let that set a second. And then finally, I'm going to slide that in there and that one. And I know that these are perfect. Okay. Just like that. How easy is it to make them? Do you think you get them out the packet now, Lou? <laughs> You're going to try. Yeah, you sh it, they are so easy. Well, you've bought them. What, what did you get? Did you get them for a specific project? That's what I want to know. Did you go, oh, 
yeah, I can do this, this and this. Was there a list all of a sudden that you thought, oh, I can make this, this and this? Or is there is there anything? Was there was there one? Type in the comments if you had them, if you had it in mind for a specific one that you wanted. So now that is set and that's one of my frames, which is fabulous. I'll pop that to one side. I'm going to do the same thing again. But this time we can do it much quicker because we've practiced it loads. Do you know how many of these boxes I've made? <laughs> so again, we're going with this one. But remember this bit. Don't forget, we've still got this bit. Okay, so there's a little top tip that I want to show you with that. So as I said before, I like to work with it on this side, okay? I like I have all the pieces facing that way. And I already know that I need to cut off is it six inches or five inches. Can anybody remember? Five inches. So straight away, out of two of them, I'm cutting off that straight edge, remember? I'm not cutting off the other piece because I've already also made that mistake as well. <laughs> Put the wrong end off. So now I've got two short ones, two long ones, and I'm just going to fold, fold, like so. And again, and these really are once you've made them as, as that many times, they're super quick. Now one tip. When you're folding them and you've got the score, just be gentle with the score line and run it across and pull that score line towards you. And then when you fold it, pull it down and fold from the middle outwards at the same time on the longer lengths. Don't be tempted to fold it from the edge and just go along one because sometimes what happens, it goes a bit skew and then you end up with a tram line of a score, okay? So it's much easier just to lift it up nice and gentle, pull it towards you, get that score line going, and then go out from the middle both sides. Has uh, anybody put in comments what they'd be using them for? I can't wait. You know when you do do these, you know, do do. That's good English. You know, when you do actually use the <laughs> Kay's laughing at me again. Um, when you do actually use these, can you send us some pictures of what you do with them? Because I'd really like to see, yeah? I'd really, really like to see what it is that you, you actually make with them because they are such a fabulous idea. And also, if you have a go with putting a wrap and things on them as well, changing them up and doing something different. Because like I've just said... Even though we've put this wrap on and turned it into a card, we can now make this an aperture, okay? So we've made a square, we've got this, but before you put your actual wrap on your card, you can then put a little small circular aperture on it. So then you build a story on the outside with whatever it is that you're making, your, your actual um, project. And then when you open it up, the story continues on the inside as well. So even though you've got it like this, or even you've got this one, Lou's ran off. You've got this one like this. You've got a frame on, you've put your front on, but there's no, nothing stopping you putting another frame on the front of that as well. So you're actually building a frame within a frame, but that's, that's one story, and then that's a second story. So then you're talking about making books and journals and things as well, which is a whole different ball game altogether. So we're now going to turn them over, use our best friend, red liner tape. So everybody, am I explaining this easy enough? Do you think that the, do you think is there anything you want me to go over again? Have I gone too quickly? Just let me know. Or let Andrew know, and Andrew will let me know. It's like Chinese whispers. Okay. 
but making a frame on top of a frame or a frame within a frame I think is absolutely fantastic. Ah, that's okay. So thank you. Ah, oh, bless you, Lou. So Lou actually purchased hers with the, was that the wood grain in? With the, yeah. So the rocker tool thing. Yeah, absolutely. So Lou, have you actually had your wood graining tool out? Have you had a play? Have you had a go with it? No, she's, no. Why? Oh. So we need to do, we need to have a session where you're sat in front of me with the tool actually using the tool, don't we? Yeah? Is that something you'd like to actually, you know, you, that you're, you're crafting along, you have the kit in front of you and you're doing exactly the same thing as what we're doing at the same time? Yeah? So I've got all carried away and I've made all that when I've not even said anything. So as before, same side on this edge, not quite up to that score line again. I've left that little bit, fold it over, so that's towards me, fold it in half, and then that's that piece. And then again, take off my tape, fold that top quarter over, fold it up to meet it, and then that's that piece. So again, now, goes there, that one goes there, that one goes there, okay? like so. So this, I'll speed this up a bit because I want to show you how you can make these shadow boxes and make them really quite deep. So then we really are going into that realm of home decor. So Lou can absolutely get that thingy rocker tool out and make a wood grain in, which would be fantastic. Now, the only thing you would do with that, Lou, is when you're using that, you would do your wood grain in or some of you wood grain in before you actually built them. So you would do your wood grain in. Sometimes you could do it flat as the piece is laid out. So like so, okay. But you wouldn't wood grain on one of these edges. You'd just do these pieces and then you'd fold it up, okay. So it's going in there. That slides in there. And that goes in there. So, and I'm just going to, I'm just making sure that that glue is just adhering. Then I know if I line that up on there, I know that that's square straight away. Absolutely. So then the fun thing is thinking about all the other things that you can do with these. So now I'm going to go, yes, pop that on top. like so and then that creates me but if I stand that look look at how deep that frame is now it's wonderful so then to make the frame the same, same size on the outside so it steps the other way you would measure this to measure the same length as this one you know like I've cut six inches off of the ends yeah and so you would measure this one so Going back to next lot of frames. Can you imagine all the samples I'm going to have to make to actually use all these frames? <laughs> okay, so to do it the opposite way on, not that one, go with this one. See how many I've got? They're all over the place. What we do now is because they're already scored, we don't have to do any cutting. Work with them all the same way. Okay. Every time. So you can imagine now, 
when you're actually doing all of this, how many frames you can get from one pack. Because if you wanted, we've done these as, like I said, 11 inches or 28 centimetres. Um, if you were to then only want um, a 5 inch frame, the piece that you've cut off, you can still use it, it's super, super easy. Is what you do is you take your template. So this is a piece that I've already got or one of your others that you've already got that's the same size. And that's the bit I've chopped off. You hold it over the top. And this is, this is again, just one of those rules that I think is important to say. If you then draw here, but it must be a super, super sharp pen, pencil, or a really fine, fine liner. And you can just mark across here and here, snip that piece away. So you would then be able to use the pieces that you've chopped off, whether it be to add on to other long pieces to make extra rectangles, or you've got four of these that are the same size that you can then use the edge and create another box. OK, so all these cutoffs aren't going to go to waste at all. OK, so you can still use everything that, you, that you've got on there, which I think is rather good. So now to make sure I've got them all the right way around. Quickly put these together. You'll see another way. So we've come up with loads of different ways of using these, but again, adding that texture, even if it's a floral um, embossing folder, another way of using it, but then turning them into books and, and the folders, turning them into cards. You can even um, make a lid for them. So they could actually be, you know, like we did the actual front piece. You could do exactly that. Measure the um, frame and create a little box lid to go over the top of them as well. I think I might save that one and do a little... Um, little YouTube or something, a little TikTok of making a box lid for a frame. So again, fold it over. And now you've really got the hang of doing this because we're keeping everything the same way. Fold it and fold it. Okay. So can you imagine if it was, if it was, um, you know, like a 50th anniversary or something like that. Big, big anniversary. This could be um, 11 by 11 frame. You could then put your um, card front on the front of it. So this is a huge frame like this. You could then put a card front on top of it, put acetate in it and have it that there's a pocket and then you can put all your little hearts and your memories and keepsakes for a wedding. Or if it's a really big anniversary, it would be a memento to keep then, isn't it? So. Uh, yeah, um, so I've had a question. Would we fold the score lines before embossing? I actually did exactly that. Yes, good question. I did fold them. And I reinforce those score lines before I actually put it through the embossing machine. Okay. And they are still there. Because I did wonder, because you know, like sometimes you, you do something and you use an embossing folder and then you've lost what you did. It doesn't actually work like that. So it's it you can actually still see the lines because they're they've been you, especially if you reinforce them. So if you use a bone folder as well and reinforce them, absolutely, once you've used an embossing folder, you can still see that frame. So that one on there. And it gets very addictive when you've actually got into doing this. This style is one of my absolute favourites to do as, um, especially, you know, special ones, like, like grandmas and things like that, you know, to the special family members. They always get something pretty much like this as a keepsake. So... That's why I love plain flare. OK. 
right? Because it gives you wiggle room. So now that is on there. Now this one, I haven't cut at all, okay? I've just left it as it is. So this is, oops. Helps if you let them stick. Because I've got things that I need to show you. Okay, so now, remember we're going back to this one. So this hasn't got anything cut off it. This is the 28 centimetres. This is the full frame, but this is the inch. So now, if you make another one and don't cut it, it fits on top, like so. So now you've got the step going inside instead of outside. We've got a deeper box frame, which is wonderful. I love these frames. So we've now got, go back to this one. And I forgot to tell you, which is really bad of me. My lid will be on here somewhere. Um, we've got a code as well for the thing. Oh, okay, getting a pen. <laughs> The code is for this one, it's 25% off of everything on the website, okay? So if you go onto our website and um, fill your baskets, it's it's not the brother, it's not the cadence, and it won't be the brand new stuff. So it's all the craft master and anything else that's on there has got 25% off across the board, okay? And that's for 48 hours. So if there's anything that you need, your glues and things, especially the frame or the multi, you know, the extra colorways that you can get. I'm sure there's three. There's like, um, there's like an oak one. There's a, a darker wood one. And then there's a lighter one, like a wash wood, almost as if it's been whitewashed, I believe. So there's extra. So again, if you, if you've got this frame, like our lovely Lou has, um, to actually then go on and get the extra colorways would be fabulous. But if you're watching after the 29th of September, I'm sorry, but um, the code won't. So it's, it's just for the 48 hours as of from today. So like I was saying earlier about these frames, we've got these. I've got two eggs. I've got a different size one. OK, so then we can do something that's really different with them, which I think I'm going to have to have a go and actually build a proper sample of this rather than it being because obviously when we do we we leave we leave everything separate so we can build up so that will fit inside there which is lovely and i've know we've done additional ones or even the deeper one that will fit in there rather nice can you just aren't they just wonderful when you look at them they're just fabulous and then don't forget to get your inks out as well and just add in a brick in fact let's do it So on this one, even just add in and just a light brush, I think, on that edge. And then again, I can put any extra ink on this. I'm just using what's in my brush. Like so. But I just think they are fabulous. And then just come in on the edge. It's not a brand new frame anymore. We've had a little, we've vintaged it a little bit, aged it up. And also going on the inside edge if you wanted to. But we can pop that one in there. But then we can get really quite, do different things with them. So we could make one, I have got some smaller ones, but Mel's got them on air. <laughs> They're not here in Peterborough. So I've got some really dinky ones. So rather than having one frame in here, you could have it that you get two smaller ones and build up something really different. So then you're talking, you're going into family photos as well. So don't think of these just for your craft, because it isn't. It's not just for like building up images like this. Of course, they're fabulous for that. But also think of your photo frames at home as well, what images you can bring into them even doing a scrapbook page this would be lovely 
um, because then you can put the scrapbook page up on your wall. I know they're in books usually, but you could do an extra, you know, special day out or a wedding or something like that and give it as a gift. It's super easy to put lights in the back of them as well because they're not bored and they're really lightweight. So if it was something, which is again, we you know, struggling with putting things in the post, you know, if you're thinking about posting something that's quite heavy, you can make something that is wonderful and it's really lightweight to go in the post. You'd put it in a box, but even so, it's still going to be a, a lot less money because it's a lot lighter weight. So then you could even think of doing something like this, okay? So offset your frames. And if you're offsetting your frames and overlapping them like so, you could put something in the middle, but you could put something here and then put a picture here as well. So then you're really playing with your layout and how to use the frames totally differently. Um, again, I quite like the fact that we've got three frames here. Now, if I'd got smaller ones, I would do them in threes on the inside as well, whether you have them this way or you'd have them like um, above each other and to the side, not necessarily as a, as a, as a diagonal. But to work with them like that, it's then how many places, if you look at the actual frame, one, it's creating some fabulous shadow, which is the whole idea of having a shadow box. But we've got the back piece that we can decorate inside. We've got the frame within this one. You can have a frame in here and then you can decorate and have a frame within this one. Because one of the other things that you can also do, which is just wonderful, is you don't have to, if you don't want to, use these two pieces, okay? So if I hadn't put those pieces on, I can just put that up to the edge, cut down the other piece so it's smaller, rotate it round and put it on the inside at this side. So I've got a small frame up here and a larger frame up here, but I've only used two sides of my frame instead of using all four. So now it just keeps giving and giving and giving. So if you think about, you've got um, 11 by 11 frame, even if you only cut off inches off it, you've got so many different variations on size. And that's the thing I absolutely love about these is because like I said before, I'm now making the product pro project work for me. I'm not now you can only make a frame that's this big because that's all we're going to give you. So I can have the big frame. I can then bring in the rectangle and have the rectangle frame instead, which again, totally changes everything. You can bring in embossed frames and pattern frames as well instead. Oh, my days. I can... <laughs> hello oh my word we've got a collie dog we've got we've got we've got oh bless you so we've got Kay her, her her little fur baby has come and just just jumped on a knee out the blue and put his face right in the camera so all I can see is a wet nose and eyes hello <laughs> Sim is it him Kay or is it her is it him or her her, it's a her. Bless her. That was quite amusing. Looking up, and all I could see was all this black and white fur. Just, just launched herself into the. Oh, I'm here. Bless her. So that's brilliant. So you could do a picture with her in it. It's brilliant. <coughs> so again, the frames, the versatility knows no bounds. It is fantastic. So like I said, from the teeniest, one of the smallest ones I made was. Um, I'm going to say it was about two and a half inches square and I made it to go with the um, gatherings of gatherings. So I made a tiny about two, it was about two and a half inches square. In fact, I can tell you exactly how big it was because it was that big. It was the smallest of the frames. So I took this, one of these, chopped it down and made a tiny weeny little frame for that to sit on top of. So you can really take them really, really little. So then you can see just how, oops, how versatile and how big it can go. 
So we can go from really little big ones to really teeny, teeny ones. And so, um, so you can then see, I'm just going to keep this, we can just keep all of this. And then we've got that idea. And then we can make them in this size. And then we can do it like that size as well. And then we've got these sizes. And then I've got all of these. <laughs> Kay's laughing at me. So I'm surrounded by frames, Kay. I've got nothing but frames. Then I've got part ones done. Look, I've got lit bits. So it gets very addictive. So be warned when you actually get going with them, okay? And Lou, I want to see, I want you to put on Highlight Crafts. So when you've done it, put it on highlightcrafts.com, okay? Or put it on our, yeah, pop it on our Facebook page, okay? Because we do absolutely want to see everything that you make, okay? So even if you just now finish this, go away, get them out and just build a frame. Really, just let us see what you're, build, what you're making with them because it, that's, it like gives, we love it when we see what you're doing with everything. So I hope that helps. Have I given you enough inspiration there to get you going? Yep. Yeah. Lou's nodding. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Are we... Yeah, we're all right. Even the dog got involved in that, so it can't be that hard, can it? <laughs> so remember, when you do the wrap around, also be able to make the apertures, but cut your aperture first because that is also a mistake that I've made where I've got carried away, stuck it on the front, then I can't put that through the machine, can I? Because it's already stuck to my box like a fool and then make extra frames on top. So it's so versatile, it really is wonderful. And to be able to work with the two Red Robins collections and also up and coming collections, but the fairy boxes to make bigger fairy ones like this. So can you imagine our lovely Mel's, that lovely, those lovely quirky bird fairies and doing a wrap. So you've got the, the cover on the front and you open that up and it's just full of all those lovely quirky bird fairies would be fabulous. So thank you so much for joining me. I do appreciate you coming along and having a look at what we're doing and all the inspiration that we give you. If there's anything else that you can think of that you might want me to show you or go through, please email us, okay? And we'll do everything we can to actually get that for you so you can have a look and we can share with you the education and the inspiration. But thank you very much, Maria, Hilda, Lou, Kay, been wonderful and also the uh, appearance of our lovely collie dog that came in and joined us <laughs> so thank you very much and i'll see you all soon and don't forget that code okay thank you bye everybody